most efficient way to build an LLM based application in 2024 is to use multiple LLMs and there are multiple ways to do it. You have mixture of agents. Sometimes people just stack multiple LLMs, but one of the ways to use it is to use a router. A router, as the name suggests, is nothing but a system that can route your query to the most ideal LLM. So for example, a prompt comes in, it goes to the router and the router decides uh, what is the right LLM in this particular case that should handle this particular prompt. It sends it to either GPT-4 or Gemini Flash or Quen2. Like for example, Quen2 is the cheapest in this, GPT-4 is the most expensive one in this and Gemini Flash is somewhere in the middle. So the router decides in the most intelligent way about what is this prompt and where this prompt should go in such a way that it can minimize the cost and at the same time it can serve the prompt in the most appropriate way. This is one of the most popular approach and this is completely uh, something that people have been doing privately. It's not something new, like I've been consulting some companies where a router based approach is something that people have been doing. Say they have built their own inbuilt classifier, sometimes even a simple regex based intent uh, understanding intent classifier that can tell you what is the prompt. Like for example, if this prompt requires reasoning, maybe GPT-4 is the right model. If this prompt does not require reasoning, you can send it to a lower tier model model but now there is a standardization happening with this and uh, there is a new open source initiative that is called a route LLM it is coming from a very popular organization called LMSYS which is one of the most popular chatbot benchmarks that we have got uh, the LLM benchmark the chatbot arena is from LMSYS so LMSYS has created an open sourced a new cost effective LLM routing framework and that is something that they call route LLM so now when I say frame Framework. Now you might think this is Llama Index or Langchain. So no, this is not Llama Index. This is not Langchain. Rather, this is a completely new model that they've created. So they've trained four routers using a mix of chatbot arena data under data augmentation. Data augmentation is nothing but take this existing data and add your own data, modify your data, transform the data, and then create four sort of routers. I hope at this point you all understand what is a router. So if you are not very clear, just to clear it you have a query that is coming from the user but rather than typically what would you do uh, any LLM based AI application take this query send it to GPT-4 open AI call get the response back show it to the user but that is not the most efficient way in terms of cost and also in terms of fallback mechanisms. So you install a router in the middle, the router decides where this should go, whether to a model like GPT-4 or whether a less expensive, but probably suitable for this task task kind of a model like Mixtral 7 billion parameter model, MOE model. So then it goes to that particular model, get the response back, give it to the user. The user doesn't care about where this went unless until you actually completely screwed up the response. But otherwise this router has done its job. Now, one of the reason people do not use router is also because router also sometimes increases cost the way you implement. But in this particular setup, router does not increase the cost massively because the router is also a very small LLM. And that is why also a lot of people do not use LLMs for routers in the first place. Because see, for, imagine you have like 100,000 token and uh, if you have to send it to GPT-4, let's say. So one, you're going to make 100,000 token here, but at the same time, the same 100,000 token, you're going to send it here. So ultimately you're going to be built for 200,000 tokens. So sometimes people do not want to do that. Uh, they just go with GPT-4. That's where it's very key for you to decide what is that uh, particular router or setup that you want to use. But according to route LLM, they have said that your cost can go by almost like 22 times. And that is their main pitch. They are saying that, okay, your cost calls can uh, reduce by 50%. That means like instead of spending, let's say $100,000, you can spend $50,000 now, assuming that all these calls that you are going to send it to GPT-4. And again, this may not be completely uh, relevant for you. If you are somebody who only uses a 7 million parameter model, or maybe you're using only a quantized model, but the approach could be really helpful for you to decide how do you want to stack these LLMs for your LLM application. So let's begin with what they have done. So they have trained four routers uh, with the data. So we know what is the data that they've used, the chatbot arena data, the data augmentation, and then the four types of routers that they trained, as you can see here, one is randomness, completely randomly you send it. It's like, you know, you have given a button to a monkey and the monkey is going to decide when something should be sent to which LLM. That's it. 
completely random nothing uh, unless until the monkey is uh, let's say strapped with a neural link maybe elon musk would say that an intelligent monkey but completely random is this central line but then they have got four kinds of routers the first one is a similarity weighted sw ranking router that performs a weighted elo calculation based on similarity so now elo is something that we have already seen it's kind of a ranking mechanism uh, it's a, it is how tennis players are ranked it is how chess players are ranked it is how chatbot also ranks the model so it's a weighted elo calculation and then the router decides based on the similarity of the prompt and it calculates the elo calculation and the, based on the elo score the top ranked model gets the prompt this is the most probably the simplest approach that you can do create a ranking mechanism in this case they have created a similarity weighted ranking router the second one is a quite interesting approach for anybody who is watching here who has got a background in a recommendation engine recommendation system might already connect with this a matrix factorization model that learns a scoring function for how well a model can answer a prompt this is almost the foundation of how netflix would recommend a particular show or a particular movie to you so you have certain preference netflix show has certain attributes and it recommends you based on this and if you want to learn more about matrix factorization i would link this google uh, documentation or a tutorial in the youtube description so you can see that there are four different kind of people there are four different kind of or five different kind of movies and based on the preference of existing people you recommend this movie to a new person and that is almost what happens in a recommendation engine so matrix factorization is a technique which is like a very simple embedding technique you create a representation so what they have done is they have created a, a router uh, that uh, that is basically a matrix factorization model that learns a scoring function for how well a model can answer a prompt something like this and based on the score you route it the third one is another approach a deep learning based approach a bird classifier that predicts which model can provide a better response you can use a bird classifier that they have done here but if you want the simplest approach like build an xeboost model that can probably tell you which router it should go with the sorry which model it should go with the final one is a causal llm classifier that also predicts which model can provide a better response so now if you see this ranking this will be the costliest model this will be the cheapest model and somewhere in the middle you are talking about a deep learning based model and also matrix factorization so this was actually using an llm for a router but all these techniques so this is using a deep learning based model like a bird model this is not even using a deep learning based model but the fundamentals of that and this is simply using a ranking mechanism so these are the four methods that they have used to build a router and when you see the percentage of calls uh, that uh, were gone to gpt4 if you see the bird based models you can see before augmentation the bird based model favored uh, mixtel most while uh, the ranking method favored uh, gpt4 most so you can see the top one is gpt4 the, this one is mixtel so it's a scale between mixtel and gpt4 and then you can see that the number of calls to gpt4 has reduced like i said this is again if your baseline is gpt4 then this is an excellent approach but if you are if if you are not using gpt4 already if you are using a cheaper model maybe this is not good enough for you and again there are certain comparisons between uh, route llm versus other commercial offerings like for example you have got the um, route llm percentage of calls uh, to gpt4 and uh, you can see the baseline is uh, gpt4 here a uh, two llama 2 model and uh, there is a tool called martian so martian stays here and their claim is that route llm is better than martian so you have got unify ai which is another router it is also an open source library but also i think they have got like a cloud offering so unify ai is somewhere here but again the causal llm and uh, the matrix factorization is somewhere here so when you put together all these things uh, one important thing that you have to understand is you are building a router not just to save cost but also you don't want to compromise on the accuracy or the scores that it is going to provide so that is very important because you are trying to significantly reduce the cost but without compromising the quality so cost reductions over 85% on mt bench 45% on mmlu while 35% on gsm 8k as compared to only gpt4 again this is not using gpt4 turbo as a baseline this is using gpt4 but overall i would say this is a very interesting approach uh, so you have got the cost in log scale in the x axis you have got the model performance in the y axis and you have got models all over the place and the ideal router is somewhere here so the cost is much lesser than even gpt4o but it is somewhere closer to gemini 1.5 flash 
somewhere closer to Claude 3.5 3 haiku so Cloud 3.5 Sonnet would come come somewhere here. It's uh, even better than GPT 3.5 Turbo, but in terms of model performance, it's far above the Mistral, Mixtral MOE model, the GPT 3.5 Turbo model. Uh, surprisingly, they didn't compare it with Quinn or uh, like Deep Seek Coder, but something that I would love to do. They've also released a detailed paper explaining all their techniques, and they've also kindly shared the model in itself for us to use it. They've partnered with Anyscale for this, and uh, if the model is also available open source on hugging face if you want to use it you can right away start using it i might put together a hands-on tutorial about how to use this llm router for you to use uh, within your production application but until that i think this is an excellent application some things uh, people have started standardizing and like you see here there are already paid offerings tools that are available here to make people already optimize their cost and like i said it's not only about cost you need fallback mechanism if you want to build a robust a software application on top of llms and uh, this is an excellent way to reduce the cost while also not compromising on the quality while also not relying on one single monopoly llm so this is an excellent solution thank you llm lm sys for providing this see you in another video happy prompting